Hello, I'm Eva Marsh. I am the author of Black Patent Shoes Dancing with MS, and the second edition is called Still Dancing. Um, I started having funny symptoms the summer I was eight years old. And everybody told me that I was making it up. I was trying to get out of doing the dishes or making my bed or whatever. And nobody paid attention. And my mother would always say, just run outside and play. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. So I thought, well, if the adults don't care, then I guess it's no big deal. So time went on. When I was 16, I lost my sight. And there wasn't much said about it other than the family doctor said my problem was that I did too much reading. And that was why I had lost my sight. Oh, my uh, that was actually an early sign of MS, as were the signs when I, the summer I was eight. And uh, when I proceeded, finished school and uh, got married, of course, a lot of us did in those in the 50s, did high school and then got married immediately. And uh, off to Guelph to help my now ex-husband through veterinary college. And uh, quite very quickly had two little girls. And then I woke up one day and I couldn't move. And I struggled to get off the bed and fell on my face on the floor and uh, struggled. I could hear the girls in the next room. They were all ready to get up. My ex-husband, he had already left for school. He didn't know anything was wrong. And uh, anyway, I'm not quite sure how I made it, but I struggled and uh, we got through the day. Uh, that was the beginning of the, the diagnosis finally, that all of these funny symptoms that I had been experiencing since I was eight years old were actually signs of multiple sclerosis. Well, then they sat me down and told me all the bad news that basically I was never going to totally recover. There was no healing. My life was over. I didn't have long. And somebody even told me to get my affairs in order. I didn't have long. And I just shook my head and, and I thought, well, this is silly. I have children to look after. I have to finish putting my husband through veterinary college. I've got a job, you know. So anyway, I did recover. Um, my of course my my ex-husband had some textbooks uh, at home and so i started reading in a physiology book about the nervous system and how it works when it's well you know when it's operating properly so in spite of all the predictions i did recover fully within three months and uh, was ready to go back to work the beginning of june now, luckily, I worked at the veterinary college and I had access to a full medical library. And so I started spending my lunchtime uh, in the library reading. They had stacks and stacks of uh, journals. And uh, you know, now remember, this is 1967. So when we look at what's in a library now and what's in a library 50 some odd years ago, uh, but it was still a treasure trove for me. And uh, I very quickly stopped looking at medical textbooks and started going straight to research. And very soon I found research saying, proving actually with electron microscope photographs that there was healing in the nervous system. And here were all these people telling me that there was no healing. And yet on the other hand, I was looking, I was studying electron microscope photographs showing beyond a doubt that myelin repaired itself. So this was the beginning of my note taking um, because I, I wanted to have all of these facts available. Well, time went on and I started keeping a diary of symptoms and so on. And uh, we, he graduated and we moved out west to the land, cowboy land, which was very interesting. But not everyone can deal with a partner who has a significant a, uh, diagnosis. And actually, research studies have shown that about two thirds of marriages break up when one member is afflicted with something serious. So, anyway, it wasn't too long, and the girls and I were back in Ontario. and. Uh, and I was determined that I would build a new life here in Ontario and raise the girls here myself. 
So that was the beginning of a whole new lifestyle. And we lived in an apartment across from McMaster. And that was just about the time that they opened their medical school. And so before too long, there was a medical library right across the road. So I was back being able, I, I pretended I'd belonged. I would walk in and walk in and sit in the library and pretended I belonged and uh, continue reading journals and catching up on more and more information, which continued to support the, the proof that I found in 1967 that the damage repairs itself. And the secret is that it repairs itself with movement. And looking back on how I had recovered, I had ignored my problem and focused on looking after my children, which of course required that I move. So then um, I met more and more people, built a whole new life, and they were encouraging me to write about it. And somebody even brought me an old typewriter and said, here, get going, start typing. And uh, I was very pleased that they were so encouraging. And so I started to take my notes and uh, type up various things. And people have often said to me, well, how did you write your book? Well, I didn't write my book. I wrote about things that annoyed me mostly. And I would type out two or three or four pages and uh, expressing my concerns and how I was addressing them and what I was doing about them. And then after a few years, I took this whole pile of paper and I started sorting it out. And it actually sorted out into chapters. And I thought, oh, well, here I go. I've, I've got my book half done. And so what I started working on after that was smoothing out the chapters and adding more information. And uh, eventually I did prepare a manuscript that would have been in the 70s, I guess. And I contacted a an agent in Toronto and she read the manuscript and at that time and she said well you really need an editor to pull this together so she found me an editor and this editor did not want to take on this manuscript but then she read it and she did because as it happened she had a sister and a brother who had multiple sclerosis and so she and her sister was like me and had always recovered and built a whole new life, whereas her brother had gone downhill almost immediately and died. So she thought that a book like mine should be published. And so she took on the editing. And uh, then nobody wanted to publish my book. I sent it to publishing house after publishing house and a lot of them didn't even send a letter. Uh, then there was an ad in the Weekend Globe and Mail from a producer in England for the BBC, and he was doing a series on uh, journals and diaries. And he invited anybody in the Commonwealth to send a one-page example uh, or description of their diary, and then he would make a selection. So I whipped off a one page letter to him and ultimately I was selected to be one of the 10 diaries chosen. And before and then he came to Canada to interview me and prepared the interview. And he said, I think you'd better have something ready in print. He said, because I think you're going to get quite a response. He said, I'm expecting quite a response to your interview. And by that time, I had made some connections at McMaster and I took it to the print department <laughs> and they pulled together a cover for me and uh, put it all together and printed it off and I was ready to go. And sure enough, most of the whole first printing, uh, which I think was 20, 2,500 copies, all got mailed to the UK one copy at a time. And so that was the beginning of my success, I guess, as a, uh, as a self-publishing author. So it's been a lot of fun. I've met wonderful people. Uh, and of course, with the progress and technology and so on, and now we have uh, 
Zoom and Skype and emails and so on and instant translation, which is wonderful because along the way somebody published or translated my book into Russian for her a woman in in the United States did that for her mother in Moscow and as a result uh, I now have a whole group of Russian friends who have read my book and so we can communicate back and forth and uh, share research and one of them actually started a website um, with the research from my website and other research that he that he's asked for and then he translates it and puts it on his site so it's it's been very exciting it's been a wonderful wonderful journey uh, exploration and uh, I'm very pleased that so many people were interested not just in my story but in the research I found to back up my story Oh, the library in Guelph on the second floor of the veterinary college, that library saved my life. Because had I not found the research and all of those wonderful electron microscope photographs, I don't know if I would have had the strength to proceed past all of the people who were telling me uh, that I was in denial and uh, I was crazy for not doing, you know, taking drugs and so on. And, and it was amazing the number of people who told me that I was too active and that would speed up the disease process. And because of the research I found, I was able to confidently ignore the medical research and just get on with my life. Oh, yes. Uh, just recently, um, Bio and Tech, who are, is one of the uh, pharmaceutical companies that developed the COVID vaccine, they announced that they have a vaccine that can control multiple sclerosis. So, of course, I had to get on the internet and check all that stuff out and get into PubMed and start reading the research. And I am currently preparing a rebuttal because there's a huge fallacy in their work. And uh, I'm, I'm going to put that on my internet uh, page very shortly, so. It, well, actually, when I published the second book, it, it what there wasn't really enough for a book. On the twentieth anniversary of the publication of Black Patent Shoes Dancing with MS, I started to get a lot of emails and calls from people saying, "Well, it's been twenty years since you published your book. What's happening? How are you? And what do you think of research in the last twenty years?" So I put together what I've been doing in the last 20 years. And then I did a very in-depth search of research over the last 20 years. And I wrote up two chapters. Now that wasn't enough for a book. So what I did was I republished Black Patent Shoes, adding on these two extra chapters and with some extra um, graphics and uh, which I thought would be interesting including my life history with MS. I drew it as a graph showing the, in my estimation, the extent of the damage and uh, the length of time it took me to recover from, from each episode. So here it is. This is still dancing. And that's, there I am. <laughs> okay. Uh, one of the things I want to read is uh, from what I've been doing in the last 20 years. To be argued that untrained, I could not possibly understand. However, in my ignorance, I read research literally. I learned about undifferentiated cells that float through the body waiting for instruction to become the cell required for repair and maintenance. These instructions arise from the effort to engage in customary activities. Today, these cells are named STEM and research, research doesn't know how they work. 
and so they continue to do numerous projects. It, the research I found has been applied to healing and recovery from the damage of multiple sclerosis. I know from experience that readers of my book and conference attendees that self-healing and recovering from MS is possible. At times, I hear of a reader's success years later. Sometimes people buying machinery from my husband uh, share personal concerns, and he always keeps my books handy at the shop. About 10 years ago, while making a deal, a farmer told my husband that his daughter had recently returned home in a wheelchair because of MS. Don told him that I had written a book about recovery and the man left with a copy. Recently, the man returned for more machinery and Don asked him about his daughter. He replied that she read the book and announced, if Eva did it, so can I, and she is now mobile and back at work. I celebrated when Don told me the story that had unfolded beyond my awareness. I encourage those of you diagnosed with MS who have recovered to share your experiences. The world needs to know that we can heal and recover and reclaim our lives. And if we don't want to go to back to our former lives, we can make decisions to create a new life. Many readers have shared their new lives with interesting activities, careers, and exciting studies in college or university. Lives full of teaching, sailing, hiking, music, art, and dancing. Thank you. Well, I want to th thank the Norfolk uh, Public Library System. I have engaged in numerous uh, author series that they've held in Port Dover Library and really enjoyed them. And, and I love going to Norfolk County. I love all the little shops and wineries and uh, beautiful uh, uh, market gardens and so on. And it's a lovely, lovely area of Ontario. And I feel so fortunate to be invited there so many times. I thank you. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to share my experience. And I just turned 77 this week. I keep dancing as long as I can. And actually, Tai Chi started up again yesterday. So we're back doing Tai Chi once a week. May I just add my website? My website is sure. www.evamarsh.net. Thank you.